that. I'm Tom Meyer from Archer Exploration. I'm the president and CEO. Archer Exploration is a nickel sulfide exploration and development company with uh, key projects located in Quebec and Ontario. Our flagship project is the Grisette Nickel Sulfide Project. Uh, it's got an existing resource of five and a half million tons at 1.53% nickel equivalent. And this is a very exciting project in the sense that it's a 2012 vintage discovery and we're literally just scratching the surface. So excited this morning to speak with you guys on uh, Archer and Grisette in particular. Tom, lovely, lovely to meet you. Well, you're doing more than scratching the surface. You're drilling holes now, but we'll come to that. Um, right. I, I, I wanted to, I've been wanting to speak to you for some, some time, actually. I know Marilyn did an interview with you, which I watched last night. Very good. But I want to come at it a slightly different way, okay? Because I'm, I'm kind of e quite eager to understand how I make money investing in nickel. The, the splice man fuck are there. And I'm trying to work out, are you going to come, be able to come to the party? So can we go way back? to the deal with Woolbridge, you know, for, for grass set, right? It was valued at a certain amount when it was vended into, you know, your, your, your company. So tell me about that valuation, why you thought that was reasonable. Yeah. So at the time, the deem consideration was approximately $53 million Canadian. Uh, and then when you look at the book value, approximately about $30 million. So, uh, and that was back in, the deal was announced in July of 2022 and the closing of that transaction took place in November. And what's happened subsequently is quite fascinating. And I think more, many junior explorers are out there and seeing similar things. But right now we're sitting at a, 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 a extremely low valuation of $10 million, $10 million Canadian. So uh, one of the, one of the th aspects of this transaction was it was an all share deal. So Wallbridge Mining is focused on gold in the end. They started off in nickel exploration in, in Ontario in Sudbury in the Sudbury camp. And we have that portfolio as well within, within this transaction that uh, currently in our portfolio. So um, when, when you've got a gold investor now with a concentrated position, uh, which was a dividend out, a return of capital and species. So the Walbert shareholders got a, a Archer share. Uh, so you have this natural churn. Gold investors are somewhat different from base metals investors. So there's a natural kind of rebalancing of portfolios. So we did see some kind of port churning. Let's just call it churning over the last uh, few months in, in a tape in a in a capital markets tape of weak nickel prices like nickel underperforming exploration and development companies underperforming and that kind of churn in a in a weak market kind of painted a picture of uh, some weakness which like despite our very positive kind of news flow i think will in due course get rectified and get cleaned up and uh we'll be off off to the races again but it's been quite frustrating because we have great success on the exploration front yet yet to be fully reflected in our in our current share valuation so an opportunity is there without a doubt Matt yeah right but but okay but, but people are t sorry uh, well I guess long suffering Woolbridge uh, shareholders um, are cashing in or some of them are cashing in on to show makes recoup some of some of their losses right and, and I think you know fair enough um but it was, it's your job to tell them why that's a big mistake, right? Because you you know you knew quite a bit about what you were picking up here. It's like five and a half million tons indicated resource, right? At good grades, right? What, again, over one and a half percent nickel equivalent grades in a good jurisdiction that happened to be green, greenstone belt. So, what I mean, what would you say to them in terms of you know um, in terms of why they should have held them? What, what what did you say to them about why they should hold rather than cash in? Yeah, well, it's yeah, it, it's yeah. The, the the reason being, like, literally, just scratching this, we're just daylighting these values. Like this, this was a this was an like Grisette in particular was an asset that was uh was was in a company called Balmoral's hands, and and Balmoral and Darren Wagner and that team they were responsible for this phenomenal discovery, and uh, it got buried within Walbridge, and Walbridge very very focused on their gold portfolio, so very little work done. 
So without um, you know us coming out of the gate back in November, and without the market being familiar and knowledgeable what we what we took on, and we're we're just daylighting some of these values now. The challenge has been well, let's let's explain to you let's let's show you what we've got because it's something very special. So th this is this is this is underway and it's taken time, but th that understanding and the appreciation of what we've got and within the 23 kilometer trend within the five and a half million ton resource which has room to grow and that's our plan it, it's it, it's just we're basically telling uh investors that uh just stay tuned the values are apparent uh there it's clear and we've got a lot more to show um the street right okay Right, which is good news. But um, in terms of like, coming about that valuation thing, I mean, we're looking back when you've done things differently because you know, that overhang was always going to be there. You know, you got a bunch of upset shareholders. Of course, they're going to cash in it. And, and I guess to that point, do you think there's much more to go? Are they going to give you a, a long run up to, you know, with the drill program and the results are coming out of that, which we'll talk about in a second? Or do you think this this downward pressure thing is, is, is still going to hang over you for a while longer? How, how are you coming at it? Yeah, no, we're watching the vol The volumes have been picked up when those shares became free trading back in March and the volumes are improving in that front. And I think we're, we're, we've churned through the bulk of it now and it's there's very little left. And at a time when we were in these summer doldrums and and and, and that, that the, kind of that weakness is kind of just setting it up where it's becoming very plain just based on the releases and we're going to be back to, you know, back to school, back to markets and just seeing where we're, what we've done over the last few months and getting more eyes on it. But I, the bulk of it is chewed through uh, and it's, you know, frustrating for us as management and we own shares in the company. We're aligned with shareholders and it, it's, it has been quite frustrating to see, but yeah. We, but are you buying in the open them. market? All, all, all CEOs, you know, and all, all management have shares, but they're kind of either given or cheap stock, right? But are you buying in the open market? So uh, I, we've been buying, insiders have been buying when we're allowed to buy, when we don't have news pending. Uh, but yes, when, when we're able to, we've been buying. And, uh, and I will say, and the, the, you know, uh, that, not a, that's a very important point. We buy in the market, we buy the deals, uh, it, the, you know, the, the options and things, the, those free things that uh, many juniors you know, do use. Uh, no, we've got that alignment. That's one of the key things for, for us and the team and the board is that, uh, management is aligned with the shareholders and it, it is a, it is a very, uh, you know, transparent, um, uh, kind of al alignment where you, you just don't have some of the shenanigans, fun which can happen. Fun and games. Fun, fun and games. Fun and games. Right. Yes. Let's call it that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. And I'm sorry to press you on that. Well, I'm not yeah, sorry no, to yeah. press you. I yeah. think I got yeah. to press you on stuff like that, right? Cause you, you, you walked in with your eyes open you've done a deal and I, I, and it kind of feels like to a lot of people that had, you you didn't get the good the good end of that of that deal because and 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 what and what what, could, what what would you point to was it a case of the deal wasn't good or was it a case of well hey hang on let's just look at that nickel price guys uh, that's going to put some pressure on hey let's look at the junior uh, ex exploration market guys there's a whole bunch of other stuff out of our control is, is that would that be true. Yeah, there's a bunch of things, you know, Matt. Let me let me just think of it like this. So, would we would do it differently? No, we we couldn't do it differently. That the reality of the deal, uh, and the way it was, and and, and Wallbridge understanding. If so, Wallbridge uh, management and board understanding what the value of these nickel assets were, and they tried to find a deal, and which was the Archer deal, that could be done where they could retain some of that upside in by way of the 19.9 percent uh stake that they 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 retained in archer so could we have done it differently uh, no we would not have had this deal and we what we saw was this opportunity with these this nickel portfolio that was just ripe for exploit exploiting what was you know somewhat disconcerting or somewhat frustrating was just kind of the macro backdrop a number of things the interest rate increases like the deal was you know constructed and announced back in july closed in november but in that time period we had this rapid increase in global interest rates we had a kind of a risk i like to i don't know, I have a hard time saying these things some but the risk off uh, aspect of interest rate sensitive commodities the commodity space 
and exploration and development companies are not cash flow. The, all the cash flowing companies did suffer a downdraft as well. But those companies that were not cash flowing, that had that had projects, uh, seemed to suffer disproportionately relative to the longer term fundamentals. So we get into this disconnect, the short termism on the interest rates and what that means versus this phenomenal long term, longer term uh, cycle that we're in for a more, much more metal intensive economy. So just coming back to your question, no, the deal, not no regrets on the way it was structured, the way it was done. We anticipated some pressure uh, with that churn, but uh, the kind of this double whammy, the interest rates, the kind of the macro backdrop, uh, not helping the sector in general. And, you know, it, it, it is what it is. And, and, and we're, we're digging out of that, like literally no pun intended, uh, as we bring out results and, and, and get the story out there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like, I, I think for companies like you, I think that has been the backdrop. We're kind of looking forward. If you, you're looking at, obviously, two thirds of the market being stainless steel for, for, for nickel, two thirds of the market stainless steel, you know, China, China production up 11% for the first half of the year. You know, the signs are good moving forward. And hopefully we start moving away from the bottom. We're surpassing around sort of twenty, you know, the bottom of twenty thousand um, bucks at the moment. So let's let's see let's see where that goes. But you've got it's your job to kind of communicate to the market that hey, in terms of the demand story, it's it's all there. Now it's down to us to actually work out how we insert ourselves into and can maybe put us put the asset in the best footing to actually be a producer into that. Obviously, sometime down the line, but you've got to go through the phases. So let's talk about grass that. Um, obviously, what you what you knew about what you inherited, we talked about some of the numbers there, but you've got how much cash to do what by when? So we've got nine million of cash uh, approximately as of March or last disclosed uh, financial statement update. Uh, the financing that we completed in November of last year, we raised seven point two million dollars of flow through. We raised ten in total. Uh, as seven point two was flow through, which we renounced, so we'll be spending that seven point two million dollars. Uh, uh, the bulk of it in at Grisac, a little bit in in Sudbury and in, in northwestern Ontario, uh, and that is to be spent towards the end of uh, well, at the end of twenty twenty three. So that's the plan, and so that that exploration budget was directed at Grisac in terms of pure exploration in the sense of. We've got a five and a half million ton resource. We don't need to infill to bring it up because we've got a view that five and a half million tons is the starting point. So let's explore and with the idea thinking double, triple that resource. So how do we do that? And when you look at the deposit of Grisset and, and uh, the way that we think about it, uh, that this was once a uh, a flow, uh, a, like a comatiite flow, a volcanic flow that was once a river and then now tilted vertically. And we've got the nickel, we've got the sources of sulfur. Uh, the existing resource has only been de defined down to 500 odd, 550 meters. And again, horizontal tilted vertically river. So exploring at depth was a focus for us and our program right now as 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 we're um, you know working through the final stages of that the, of the season has been to target at depth and uh based on the results of the drill results and recent geophysics results everything is pointing towards there's a lot more nickel to be found and it's not the 1.53% nickel equivalent. Uh, the the bias in the grade is is higher. We've had 1.8% nickel, and if you were to add a nickel equivalent, you could you know add a, a 0.2 or a 0.3 to that. But you know 1.8% nickel uh, um, at at you know 330 meters of depth. So we're adding more, and there's more to be found. And we're kind of laying up everything for uh, further drill uh, targets. Right. Okay. I hear what you're saying, and, and I think if we look at people, I'm going to point, Roland, get into that now again. I'm going to point people back to the conversation you had with Merlin in terms of the so the, the, the structures of the ore body and the kind of um, the kind of cover associated with that, right? I'm interested in how you spend your money efficiently and, you know, how that drives value. Not, oh, it's a catalyst moment, guys, don't worry, be okay. But it's like, 
if, if I look at some of the other Sudbury uh, um, t or Timmins, even, you know, uh, Sulfide plays out there, they're kind of quite judicious, it seems, with, with the drilling in the sense that the step outs are of a certain size, but they can still bring inferred into the numbers here. And you've got a game up here of scaling the heck out of this thing really quickly to be able to, be able to understand what it is that you've got. So what are the assumptions that you're making with regards to the targeting and drilling, whether it be around spacing or the, or the, ty the type of braid that you're going at? Yeah. So Matt, that's a, that's a good one. And, and, um, nickel of the many commodities, nickel is hard. Nickel geology is hard and it is the needle in the haystack. Um, and using Sudbury as an example, uh, over the years, like over 130 years of, uh, mining and ac mining activity in, in Sudbury. And it's, it's very rare that you hear about a new discovery in the Sudbury camp that is not already part of an existing mine where it is, you know, a long drift that they're exploring a near mine type exploration. And I think that points to the complexity and we, we can go back through the years of like, when you remember F and X, which became Quadra F and X and the success that they had, uh, with, with a certain edge, because that team came out of Inco and were extremely knowledgeable about the potential where we in taking a, a, a further step back where we at Grisette are in this, uh, understanding just post understanding stage, a 2012 vintage discovery and understanding the system, understanding the, this, the, the size and, and scale of the, you know, this 23 kilometer ultra mafic trend and where to explore, because I'll just say in 2012, uh, the team at Balmoral were looking for gold and accidentally discovered the nickel and the, the, the drill programs were able to get to that five and a half million ton resource. And even though you can point to and quantify that five and a half million ton resource there, there's still, we are still understanding the system and the nature and how to target. So to answer your question, being very methodical. So using all the tools that are available and a lot of the high tech tools in the, in the realm of geophysics, um, and helping with targeting with, um, wh whether it's a, a BTEM aero geophysics, a mobile MT geophysics, a downhole, uh, geophysics, uh, that helps when using the latest and high powered, uh, the, 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 the most extensive, um, researched. Uh, technology that's available that helps. But in terms of like, when you think of step outs in a normal copper porphyry system, no, this is much more precise uh, and, and direct. And uh, the hole that we announced in mid June uh, that crossed the 4.6 meters at 1.82 uh, nickel, um, that was targeting a 3D bag inversion. And that was part of an area that Balmoral uh, saw about a bit of noise as it related to the geophysics. Uh, we had success with that hole and we we're quite excited. And that kind of opens up the idea and the thinking, where is this nickel pooling? Again, we've got this flow that's now tilted vertically. We've got an understanding of the flow. And so what we've got, uh, um, when we were drilling, we see the disseminated, but we've we chase that disseminated in to find these massive sulfide pools, which is where you get all the excitement, which when you get back to the ideas with, you know, the Boise's Bay back in the, the mid nineties of that the, kind of the discovery hole of whatever it was 30 or 40 centimeters of massive sulfide. That's, that's, but being very, it, it, it is being very methodical with the work and the targeting and, and spending the dollars, uh, carefully. Okay. Which is, I guess. Again, what what, what you got to say, what everyone's everyone says, but it does. It's you, you've got a good asset, right? As in your company now, but it suffers from some legacy issues. For so long, it was sitting in another company, being very valued at zero, with people not understanding one how the company was going to monetize it, and two if it was any good because the company wasn't talking about it for so many years why the heck should they value it? Now, you've got to engender some kind of freshness to it, or, 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 or maybe 
position as a news story in, in a way. And you've got to get then got to get that balance between I've got to do things methodically, systematically, which you're describing here, and also actually give people the information to understand that this is fundamentally a strong, good asset, and we are going to show you how we're going to release that value by the work we're doing now. So if you can, if you don't mind, put a slightly different hat on and go right, okay, what are you excited about in terms of your the what you're going to be able to do with the money you've got available in terms of releasing that capital? Same question, slightly different question. Yeah. So yeah, the yeah, very very excited about what we we've got in front of us, and it's we're kind of eager eager to kind of get that information out into the market to let the let people see what we see. Because when you look at the universe that that's out there of, of, of nickel projects and how hard nickel is, we've got it relatively easy that we're in, we're in, we're great jurisdiction. We've got great neighbors and great relationships with the communities and the geology, like the, 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 the geology could not be more favorable to us. And it is early, like it's, it's one of those balances with, it is early days, uh, but we've got something tangible we're not moose pasture we're not a science project so it's more of a ed, uh, a very you know coming back to the methodical doing the work that needs to be done and it, it's just a matter of time where we can share with the market to make it very plain that this is exciting this is new this is 2012 discovery this is not a 1950s 60s project that works because nickel's above nine dollars a pound this this is a project that has just started to see it and it, again coming back to the point yeah buried within wallbridge wallbridge did pivot from nickel into the precious metal space with their gold uh a, a project uh but it, yes it is it is the the onus is on management is on the archer team to kind of um, daylight this and make it plain to investors and uh, we're we're methodically doing that uh, okay. with our results. So, so, yeah. so give me give me the things that you've targeted the team. You, you know, you said to the team, look, we've got this asset, we've got X amount of money here. Um, we've got to go after these these things, and here's the priority order. So, can you give me what you think the I don't know top three priorities are, and what you think that actually means to the market, or what the, how the market should interpret those things. And I also want you to kind of obviously make that statement because you, if you come back on, I want to be able to hold, hold your feet to the fire on it. So, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so I guess if you were to take one, if one were to take a pessimistic view of what was buried within Wahlberg and now it sits within, within Archer, you take a pessimistic view and say, okay, these guys bought a five and a half million ton resource and, and 30 million bucks is probably the right number. You know, the market was weak. So yeah, it is what it is. Tough market. It'll, it'll eventually rebound. But that, uh, the idea being it's done. Yeah, Walbridge maybe, yeah, be cynical. Maybe Walbridge is selling it because there was no upside. It, uh, we know that is not, that's not the truth. They had to focus on, from a portfolio context, their low hanging fruit with Fenelon and Martinier and, and their portfolio. So it was non core to a gold company. So we've got this tremendous opportunity. And it, it, if you take a, pe again, pessimistic view, it's five and a half million ton resource, there's no room to grow. Well, we're showing that there's a lot more nickel to be found. And we've got some uh, in, information in the market with our drill results from June and, and more coming. And we also have these downhole uh, geophysics results that have come out, which are now clearly stating. So we're looking at this, there's more nickel to be found and, we, and we've we found more. Uh, and then we're kind of teeing up for the next phase. But it's very, like, n again, nickel exploration is hard. There's an appropriate pace to run. We're running as, as at the appropriate pace with, with the view that it's it's not a sprint. It, it's it's not even a marathon. This is an ultra marathon. When, when you're dealing with what we view as a potentially world scale, world industry interested nickel discovery again from 2012 um that that is that is an unf un, that is unfolding so it is more than the 30 million notional value that was ascribed at the time and with the, the results that we've seen i think people can start seeing what we see that this is a potential for a double or triple of that resource and then 
we've got 23 kilometers beyond of, of a favorable trend to yet explore and find more. Right. So okay. District. So, okay. So ultra mafic marathon. We got it. Um, <laughs> oh, see what I, I, like see what I did there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 I guess the, the thing I better get you to comment on, because you said it a few times, I'm not sure people understand um, the significance of it, right? You say, this is a 2012 discovery, not a 1950s discovery. Yeah. Why is that important? Well, it's important um, because it, uh, again, nickel's hard to find. And when you find it by accident, it should go, ooh, because, again, it's more than 30 years ago now when you're thinking about Voises Bay and the history of Voises Bay, which I, you know, people point to, but just it exploration, it, it's so rare to find something and then actually move something actually to a mine. And what's interesting and exciting for us with Grisette is, you know, you know, I'll, let's use Voises Bay as an example. So you got Robert and his group sees an opportunity. They're looking for diamonds and, he finds a way to get the land and they land on this oak crop and see the goss and drill it a season later and then 4.3 billion dollars of value created boom that is that is the extreme extreme rare event that's a black swan once in a lifetime and for robert's done it a number of times around the world but he's a very special person and how he thinks about things but understanding the rarity of that discovery and this one being discovered by accident this one being discovered within a trend that gives it a scale which would imply there's more so we've got ultramafic flows we've got a source of nickel we've got lots of sulfides in the area from you know their you know bms targeting that's been done in the past demonstrates that so you've got that scale you've got the rarity of the discovery and that that discovery moved into a five and a half million ton resource and really never followed up never followed up so when you look at some of the bigger camps and if you can go to western australia and, and cabal them out keep perseverance honeymoon like the, these things develop over time and uh what we've got uh with the the starting point with the resource it makes it somewhat easier to a degree for us to to find more and that makes it that makes it pretty special right okay okay and if we can just sort of um i guess finish off um for, for me because like i said i've listened to the merlin conversation we'll put a link below um to that as well because i think it was quite useful for in, in in a different way um when we look at the i hate the phrase fully funded <laughs> the, the funded the funded program, funded program. The, the funding <laughs> that you've allocated for 2023 yeah exploration program <laughs> um is is, is going to be was sort of like front loaded? Uh, do you think you needed front loaded, or is that the systematic pace, this this marathon pace that you you operate, mean that we can expect to see regular results across the across the year oh, or the rest of the year? I should yeah. say. So the the way that the program was set up is we we it, there's a number of legs to it. So there's a geophysics leg, there's a sonic drilling leg which so sonic drilling we didn't really touch on it but grisette yeah, one of the reasons why it's a discovery is buried but beneath glacial till so one of the exploration techniques uh that is used and was very successful in finland that anglo-american had with their Sakati project is to sample the base of the till to, and look for anomalies uh that will help target so we did a sonic program around grisette that's going to help us so our geophysics our sonic and our drilling program so we're we're wrapping up the drilling part we so we've completed the sonic uh, geophysics is underway there's a little bit more to be done uh the, wrapping up the the drill program as we speak right now and thinking about the plans for the next leg whether it's you know later this year in the season for a winter program or early next year but bringing those results in and then analyzing for those next steps. So yeah, fu fully funded for the program, the 7.2 million, which is geophysics, uh, the sonic and the, uh, the, the drilling that's underway. Um, and uh, that will set the stage for the targeting, very specific targets for 2024. Okay, well, look, Tom, I appreciate the update. Best of luck with all of that. Um, obviously, stay in touch. Let us know how you get on. Uh, I'm intrigued to see um, what you come back with. Thank you.